Once you get to polynomials and roots and factorization, the start of it all comes with the factor and remainder theorems. So in the series of these videos, I'm going to um, always refer to the factor and remainder theorem and to the basics that I'm going to cover now. So it's quite a lot of skills that we need to cover, but um, they're easy to do once you have a strong basics. So um, these are the formal theorems, and I'm not going to go through the itsy bitsy details of each one, but I will explain what each one means and how you can, which one do you use. So the first one is the remainder theorem, and what the remainder theorem tells you is that if you have a polynomial, um, so some an, a function where you have x with powers, um, and you have a real number p, then if you divide this polynomial by an x minus p, then your uh, remainder will always be f of p. Now this seems a bit odd, but I'm going to explain through numbers. Um, and then I can develop this theorem into another theorem, which is the factor theorem. And it tells you that if, if you start doing this, if you take your real number and you substitute it in your function, and we said that this is the remainder, well, if the remainder is equal to zero, then that means that your um, that your p is actually a factor, that this x minus p is a factor of your function. So let's put it into numbers, and let's actually start with um, labeling things. So this is back to uh, basics of division. So we have, when you... Um, divide the numbers we have certain names for them so you always have your dividend your dividend and then you divide it by the divisor so this is a divisor and the result is your quotient this is a common word we use the math and you always have your remainder as well so when you started division in school, you always talked about, oh, this is the result and this is the remainder. So how does it look like with numbers? So say, for example, you have, I'm going to move the theorem aside. Let's say you have uh, 13 divided by 3. Well, 13 divided by 3 is basically um, 4 with a remainder of 1. Well, rewriting this, use, I don't want to write the word remainder, I want formal numbers. So I'm going to say this is 13 divided by 3 is equal to 4 plus a third. Okay, so if I end up um, simplifying this, I will get back to my 13 divided by 3. Well, let's say I multiply the whole thing by 3 on both sides. So 3 times, and this thing is times 3. Uh, the 3 in here will cancel out, so I'm left with 13 equals to, um, I'll have the 3 times 4, and then this 3 will cancel out, so I'll have my 1. So what we have here is a situation where I can express my, uh, my, I wrote it wrong, my dividend by, um, using my quotient, my divisor, and my remainder. So I have a way of writing my expression. Now, how does this translate to functions and polynomials? Well, if I divide, uh, what it tells me is that if I divide f of x by a linear, let's say this, this linear is j, so it has to be a linear, uh, what I'm going to get is a quotient plus a remainder but the remainder, as we wrote here, is over g of x. And because we're dealing with functions, these might be functions, or they might just be numbers, um, but we have to write them as functions. So um, again, as we did here, I'm going to multiply everything by g of x. So I'm going to end up with f of x is equal to g of x q of x plus r of x. So, um, what the polynomial remainder tells you is that if x minus p is a remainder, 
then this, uh, sorry, if x minus p is, is the divisor, then to find the remainder, all you have to do is substitute this p inside of f of x. Um, I'm going to go through examples with that. Now, how does it lead up to the next one? Well, if you end up with this expression, but if your remainder is equal to 0, then what it tells you is that I can divide f of x by g of x, and it will give me a nice quotient. If I divide 12 by um, 3, it's going to give me a 4. And this tells me that 3 divides 12. So 3 is a factor of 12. And that's what this tells you. That's what the factor theorem tells you, is that if you, have, um, if you divide f of x by g of x and the remainder is 0, it means that g of x is a factor of f of x. Um, so all you'll have to do to get back to f of x is multiply g of x by uh, q of x. Again, quite complicated, but easier explained with a few examples. So um, let's try and practice the use of the remainder theorem. So the trick is to know which one to use. So if the question gives you information about the remainder, you have to use the remainder theorem. If it gives you information about the factor theorem, you need to use the factor theorem. And the facts that you have to use are um, this, that this is your remainder, and for the factor you have to use this fact that f of p is equal to zero. So if I have that f of x is this function and it wants us to find the remainder when f of x is divided by this g of x. So remember we're dealing with linear expressions. Um, so instead of me dividing these um, by each other, which is explained in another video, all I have to do to find the remainder is substitute the p from this expression. So in ideally, in, or in a long situation, you want to do f of x divided by g of x, get the quotient, and then know what the remainder is. But that's such a long process. So if I want to find the remainder, I'll just use the theorem. And the theorem tells me that if I'm dividing by x minus p, then I just need to substitute the p. Well, the minus p in this case is a negative 3. So what the minus does is it switches the sign of your p. So if I have x, min x minus 4, for example, I'll substitute 4. Um, but since I have x plus 3, I'll substitute f of negative 3. So this will get me my remainder. This will tell me what the remainder is. So it's a shortcut from actually going through this long process. All we have to do is just use this theorem. So um, what I'm going to do is just substitute negative 3 in there. And 10, negative and minus 2 in there and after a substitution you're going to get that the answer is 1. So either you go through the long division or the synthetic division but we will use the theorem where we just substitute the negative 3 in there and our answer is just 1. So the remainder when I divide f of x by g of x is 1. It's not the quotient it's just the remainder and that's when you use the remainder theorem. Now when do we use the uh, factor theorem? So the factor theorem can be used if, for example, I tell you um, prove that um, x minus 3 is a factor of um, this polynomial. Okay, so I have this polynomial and I want to prove that x minus 3 is a factor. So I have a linear expression here. Now to prove that it's a factor, I'm going to use the factor theorem. And the factor theorem tells me that if, um, if something is a factor, then the substitution is going to give me a remainder of 0. Um, and this is an if and only if expression, so let me explain what that means. An if and only if expression tells you that if tells you that your theorem goes both ways. If you substitute and it gives you a zero, then it has to be a factor. 
it also goes the other way. If something is a factor, then it has to give you a remainder equal to zero. So it, it goes both ways. There are some theorems that don't go both ways, but this does. Um, so it means that I, if I can show that my substitution will give me a remainder equal to zero, it means that it is a factor. Um, try to be smart with these. You don't have to divide them to show that the remainder is zero. Just use the theorem. So this is where the theorems are helpful. Um, so if I substitute my values in there, remember I said that you have to um, show the uh, use the um, alternate sign. So if I have x minus p, then I'm going to substitute f of p. In this case, I have f of negative 3, so I'm going to substitute 3 in there. And you can try this on your own, and you will actually get a 0. So you say using the factor theorem, depending on the question, they might ask you for a longer explanation, using the factor theorem, uh, the remainder is 0, hence not 3, x minus 3 is a factor of f of x. So that's how you use the factor and remainder theorem. So if they want you to find the remainder, use the remainder theorem. So basically you always substitute in, but you are expecting a zero if you want to prove that it's a factor, or if they give you an information that something is a factor. So um, let's finish this video by actually going through a past paper question. So this is from um, IBHL. Um, the previous HL curriculum. So you have this polynomial and it tells you that it is exactly divisible by each of these numbers and you need to find the values of P, Q and R. Now there are many different ways you could do this um, but let's use the factor theorem. So they tell you that they are um, divisible by these numbers. So if it's divisible it means that F of P is equal to 0. So I need to find all of these values so if you have three unknowns, you will need three equations, which is what we have. So for the first one, I'm going to substitute f of 1, then f of 2, f of 3. What we're going to do is we know that these should give us something equal to 0. So we're going to get three equations, and then you'll be able to solve this. So um, we are going to first substitute the 1. So we have this is x cubed x squared r plus 6 equals to 0. Not the, let's substitute the, um, just directly substituting the number. So this is 1 plus p plus q plus r plus 6. And we know it should be equal to 0 because they're divisible by these numbers. And then for the second one, uh, we have um, 2 to the power of 4. And then 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2r plus 6, again equal to 0. And then we have 3 to the power of 4, 3 cubed, 3 squared, 3r plus 6 equals to 0. And you can just skip through the video as I simplify this expression. So we have 30, uh, sorry, 16 for the first one. We to keep. 4q such and then we have um, 21 27 9 equal to 0 so uh, what we have is um, three expressions what I'm gonna do is keep P, Q, and R on one side. Now, the next following steps have nothing to do with the um, 
with the topic itself. It has to do with solving systems of linear equations, which is a different topic. Um, so if you're okay with using this, the point of this question is to be able to um, find the answers in these. Um, um, you could try another video where um, an explanation on system of equations is explained. What I'm going to do is just set it up for this question, but not actually complete the solution. Um, but if you're okay with factor and remainder theorem, you can stop the video here. So I'm just going to rearrange the expressions to put them um, to put PQ and R on one side and then the values on the other side. So for the first one, we have P plus Q plus R, and then we're going to just have negative 7 here. And then for the next one, um, not only am I going to move them, but I'm also going to simplify the whole expression. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I'm going to get 4P plus 2Q plus R equals to negative 11. And then the same thing here, I'm going to divide everything by 3. Um, so I'm going to get 9p plus 3q plus r equals to negative 29. Um, so once you have your system of linear equation, you can um, just um, solve them as a system where you write the coefficients and you um, use the um, do the simultaneous solving for three unknowns. So the coefficients for here uh, matter. Uh, try and do it. This is something that can be done with a calculator. Um, you can use the general formula to be able to solve this um, or any um, other method. Uh, the more clear method is just using the, um, the coefficients for these.